Well, Christine is pulling up the PowerPoint um, when <coughs> Secretary Crisco was speaking about education and economic development. It made me think about um, what Governor Hunt says about those two. And he says that education is economic development. Economic development is education. The two are interdispersed. You cannot do one without the other, and I fully agree with that statement. Uh, I feel very honored to be with you here today, and especially to be um, here with President Rawls. Um, Cynthia, did, Cynthia Andrew did a great job of giving um, reference to Scott Rawls and his leadership with the North Carolina Community College System, and I too want to recognize that. We actually um, began the, the way is known today as our, our 58 Community College System, this comprehensive um, series of 58 colleges actually began in the like, late 1950s as workforce development centers. So we're very unique from that standpoint. The customized training program is just one component of workforce development within our community college system. We have curriculum programs, we have workforce development for continuing education through our small business center network and through our bio network program. In 2008, we recognized that not only did we need to be very much focused on job growth, but we also wanted to be focused on the retention of our existing industry. And so Dr. Rawls was able to get legislative approval to enhance the customized training program to include those companies that were investing in new machinery, new, te new technology, and those companies that wanted to enhance the productivity of their existing workforce. And so we were able um, to, to expand what is known as our customized training program. You can see the accolades that we, um, that we have. We're recognized by the Wall Street Journal, by other trade magazines. But I think most importantly is that we are recognized as a partner with various organizations like the North Carolina Department of Commerce. We are always at the table when it comes to recruiting new industry and for our existing, in existing industry who is considering expansion in North Carolina or has options in other states and other countries. We were the very first state that recognized that training was critical in the role of economic development. This is just an example of, of showing you that our colleges actually take the lead in the whole recruitment, screening, assessment, and pre-employment um, training process. And again, just to point out to what Cynthia was saying earlier, what we're trying to do is to make sure that we're giving our industries here in North Carolina a qualified pipeline, if you will, of individuals suitable for certain skill sets. We don't do this alone. Certainly through the North Carolina Department of Commerce, we're working very closely with the Division of Employment Security. We work with the Job Link Centers, the local workforce development boards. You can see here that we've also put up the work keys and the North Carolina um, Career Readiness Certification Program. As of last night, we have greater than 100,000 individuals in North Carolina that have some level of the workforce um, excuse me, of the career readiness certification. Once employees are hired, then we continue. Um, I loved how Sophie was showing that it's not just classroom instruction. It's really hands-on, and that continues into our post-employment training for the customized training program. The fact that we're getting individuals out in the plants and engaging them um, with hands-on experiential learning. And what I thought I would do today to kind of bring it back home is to talk about three of those specific projects. The first one that I want to speak about is Spirit Air Systems. Um, in May of 2008, Governor Easley announced that Spirit Air Systems would be located in the Global Trans Park in Kinston, North Carolina creating greater than 1,000 jobs within five years, 
and investing greater than $600 million in machinery, equipment, and facility. This slide shows you exactly what this operation in Kinston would be responsible for producing, and that is they were going to produce the fusel frame and the, um, the wing structures for Airbus's extra wide body passenger aircraft. It's going to be using a composite manufacturing process, something that was completely new to, um, certainly new to North Carolina and somewhat new to, to Spirit. Through Lenore Community College, we were able to develop a, uh, a Aeros, Aerostructures Manufacturing Program. We have 120 hours of instruction in composite fabrication, in trimming, in drilling, in the assembly process. Also, instruction focused on automation. And here you can see where the site was, planned to go, and here it is upon completion. Greater than 600,000 square feet. They currently have 300 employees, so they are working uh, very quickly toward that 1,000 employees. And in October of 2011, they actually were able to ship their first qualified product. The product is shipped over to France, and that's where the, the aircraft is actually assembled. So at this facility, we now have individuals who are CNC programmers who are CNC machinists, who are composite technicians and engineers. We could not have done this without the assistance of the university system as well. We've worked very closely with Tom White and his colleagues at NC State. Um, East Carolina has been a critical player in, in this project as well. Second project that I want to talk to you about is Siemens. In September of 2009, I actually began working with um, Secretary Crisco and others within the Department of Commerce on what we were calling at the time Project Cardinal. Project Cardinal was considering locating this gas turbine engine facility either in Charlotte, North Carolina, in Michigan, or in Canada. And we knew if we lost the facility to one of those other sites, that we also want, would have the possibility of losing existing jobs that were in Charlotte. There were plans to, um, to invest greater than $290 million and to create 876 full-time positions. In March of 2010, Siemens actually announced that they would locate their gas turbine engine facility in Mecklenburg County in North Carolina, so we won, won that project. Between March of 2010 <coughs> and currently, we have hired, we have hired, Siemens has hired, and we have trained greater than 400 individuals who are now working at this facility. And you can see that the Charlotte facility is going to be very focused on the uh, combination of generators, gas turbines, and steam turbines. Now, the skill sets that were needed in Charlotte, and this is just a breakdown of what was needed um, based upon engineers and, and what we would call the technician level. We've done training in welding, metrology, and when I say metrology, it's not just you know the understanding of metals, but non-destructive testing, non-destructive examination, welding, um, and and we've also done um, training in in blueprint and and applied technology. The Caterpillar facility is is our third one that I want to look at. And this project actually started in January of 2010, working again with Department of Commerce, Project CAMO. It's five sites in North Carolina and other states. It was finally narrowed down to one site in North Carolina, which was in, was in Winston-Salem, 
South Carolina, and Alabama. We're looking at 512 jobs, $1 million, excuse me, $426 million of capital investment, and a $1 million square, one million square foot facility. That project was announced and actually groundbreaking occurred um, in, occurred in November of 2010, and you can see that they had their opening in November of 2011. <coughs> this is the product that they built. It's a 35 foot long, 100,000 pound axle. The groups that they were looking for, the employees that they were looking for were mach precision machinists, mechanics, assemblers, and engineers. And this shows you exactly what that axle is attached to. So it's a huge axle. Um, these mining trucks is actually assembled on site. They run these trucks for about 15 to 20 years. When, when they break down, they just disassemble them and bury them right in the mining field. When I was listening to Sophie's presentation as well, it reminded me exactly of what our industries are saying that our North Carolina employees need to have in addition to technical skills. And that is they need to have critical and higher level thinking skills and problem solving. They need to have the ability to multitask and learn to do more than one job. They have got to be able to work in teams and communicate effectively. They need to be able to understand and comprehend technology. And they need to have the desire to take ownership of the process. That is very important to business and industry throughout the world. Two slides to close, and this slide just illustrates <coughs> that there definitely is a, a, um, a, a mismatch, if you will, of, of skill sets in the South. You can see that for the middle skill workers, we are supplying about a 43% when actually there's a 51% opportunity for, for those jobs. And in closing, one of the things that I'd like to encourage the North Carolina New Schools Project to, to consider is actually looking at how we can engage our young children back into manufacturing. That's going to be a critical component as North Carolina continues to rebound in this economy. Manufacturing is, is, is critical um, to North Carolina. And we've got to be able to engage our young folks back into manufacturing. I was speaking with Dr. Rawls yesterday, and he threw out a statistic that within five years, the U.S. manufacturing cost will be within 10 to 15 percent of the overall manufacturing cost in, in companies like China and, and India. And we've got to be ready. So I thank you. Thank you.